One of my favourite things about making new friends is having an excuse to tell old stories again. Stories that I've gone over a hundred times with my current friends who don't care anymore. But you, you're new. I've got some old stories to tell you. It usually takes a couple of encounters or video views before this question comes up because people start to notice that I wear a headband or a bandana all the time. Laura, why do you wear headbands all the time? Well, my hair might fall out if I don't. I'm trying really hard not to set my hair on fire today. I'm only really entertaining myself with these jokes because no one else finds them funny. It's been about nine years of me wearing headbands and bandanas pretty much every single day of my life. And it all started back when I got a new job, when Sam was a little tiny toddler. Hey Sam! What? Egg -ter. Hey Sam! What? Rock on! Rock on! I wanted to make a good first impression at this new job, but my hair was a bit of a mess. My roots were showing and at the time I was self-conscious enough to think that that mattered. Given that I'd been unemployed for a little while prior to starting this job because I was looking after Sam, little tiny baby Sam, money was a bit tight. And because money was tight, hair dye was a luxury that I couldn't afford and couldn't justify. So I threw in a bandana, tied it girl style because I used to wear them boy style and toddled off to work. Nobody called me out on it, mentioned it, or said that it wasn't something that I was allowed to wear. I wore it again the next day, and the next day, and the next day. And So while I had a job, I still didn't have much money because the wage was an absolute pittance. So hair dye was still a luxury that I could do without. And I was doing well without it because now I had a bandana to wear, although it was probably only like one or two that I had at the time in circulation. I hate having hair in my face. I, I really hate it. And Mandana keeps it back and out and I don't get hair face. While that was definitely the start of me wearing bandanas regularly every single day forever and ever and ever, it wasn't the first time that I regularly worn some sort of head covering. When I was a edgy, gothy sort of teenager, I also went through a period of wearing hats. Not interesting hats, mind you, not snazzy, stylish or particularly gothy ones, although god, I would rock a top hat, wouldn't I? I used to wear old man hats because my head is freakishly large and ladies, girls hats do not fit me. In the haze of hormonal self-discovery, I was never quite sure what my intention was for wearing hats. Maybe, maybe I was just trying to be all unique and look at me, the only person wearing old man fisherman hats. Aren't I cool? Another part of it is I don't like having hair. I feel hair is a huge responsibility that I am basically not ready for. I can look after myself to a degree. I can look after my children. Again, the success rate on that is yet to be determined. Can I look after hair? Apparently not. It gets in the way. It's a big responsibility and I just can't handle it. This has led me to try in different ways to manage having hair without going so far as to cut it all off. I have braided my hair, I have dyed it blue and black and bleached it, I have covered it with hats and bandanas and I have even shaved it all off multiple times. Now some people do this really nobly but I didn't have a good reason for doing it, I didn't shave my head for charity or to donate my hair to anyone, I just didn't want it anymore, I wanted it gone. And then it'd grow back all shaggy and short and awkward and rather than move past that I'd shave it off again. The very first time I went from long hair to short I did it properly. I went to a hairdresser's and I got them to take the plunge for me. I walked in with my long hair down my back and said I have too much hair, I want less of it. It took a little bit of convincing but eventually the hairdresser was completely on board. She took my hair, put it in a plait, 
asked again if this is what I really wanted and off it went. I actually kept that ponytail for a long time afterwards. I kept the plait and I'd freak people out with it because for some reason the hair's gross. I don't know, I think everyone thinks hair's gross, they just don't realise it. I didn't consider donating the hair because it was full of split ends, it was in various stages of chemical burn basically from hair dye and bleach and it was, it was in a sorry state. It wasn't worth anything to anyone apart from freaking people out. The thing is with having such short hair is it made me examine my hair a little bit more and made me realise that I'm going much greyer much quicker than I expected. Except I kind of did expect it, I was just trying to delude myself that this wasn't something that was happening. I have been going grey since I was seven years old. When I was a little kid, about six or seven or so, my family owned a newsagent. We used to sell magazines and newspapers and sweets and groceries and things. We'd rent out movies back in the days when people used to rent movies. So I would often come and go between the house and the shop and just wander around acting like I owned the place. And we also used to have a sandwich counter so people could come in on the lunchtime, order a sandwich, have it made for them and away they go. And on this sandwich counter we had a woman called Elsie. So there's me, wandering around the shop, la di da di da as seven year olds do because that's what they do right. And as I walked past the sandwich counter, Elsie let out an almighty shriek that stopped me in my tracks. I completely froze in place and I had a hundred million thoughts running through my head and about 97% of them were Oh my god, there's a spider on my head! There's a spider on my head! There must be a spider on my head! Oh my god, there is a spider on my head! The other 3% of the thoughts that were going through my head were me wondering if I could live while I decapitated myself to get rid of the spider. My mum came rushing through to the shop and there's Elsie freaking out, and there's me freaking out, and then my mum started freaking out. It was just a big old mess of noise. Until I felt a pinch on the top of my head and my mum's hand in front of my face. In her hand was a single, individual, grey hair. Why was she holding a grey hair? Where did it come from? Was she going to use it to lasso the spider on my head? Was she going to blind the spider with the reflection on the greyness because it was so bright? Was she going to scare it away with the existential horror of we're all going to age and die someday? No, that wasn't it. No spider, no terror, a little bit of existential dread crept in as the day went by as I kind of thought of the implications of what was happening, but that was my grey hair. That one little grey hair on seven year old me's head was worth two grown women squealing like banshees and one child considering self-decapitation. And now, 20 odd years later, my hair is mostly grey. And hair dye is still a luxury I can't really afford regularly, so it stays grey. So I cover it up. With all my bandanas and headbands and fabulousness. I do have so many bandanas and headbands. I have a lot of gay pride bandanas. I'm bisexual with leanings more towards women than men and have attended quite a few Pride events both in Manchester and Carlisle and one in Edinburgh even. This one I made myself. I can crochet. When I first started teaching myself to crochet I decided I wanted to crochet myself a bandana especially as I found this beautiful black and blue yarn which are my favourites. I have a friend called Rob who just last weekend turned 40 so we held a surprise party for him and as part of the surprise we all wore masks made to look like him and checkered shirts so I bought a checkered bandana instead. During my recent house move which I will put a link to I was able to bring together all of my headbands and bandanas into one easily accessible place and I love having them all organised and there and viewable. I suppose the biggest reason I wear bandanas is not just to cover up, not just to keep the hair out of my face, but I genuinely really like how it looks. I like my hair being swished back out my face. I like the, the smoothness of the top of the head. It just, it looks right to me. I like it a lot. I wear stuff on my head so often that I legitimately feel a little bit naked if I don't have them on. It's a bit like a daily checklist. Knickers, yeah. Bra, most of the time. Bandana, yeah. They are the three essentials. As long as I'm wearing them, everything else is extra. Pants, <laughs> sometimes. It does mean on the rare occasions I leave the house without wearing one, I feel all super secret and incognito as if no one recognises me. That's my story. 
that's a bit of insight into my signature look. If you want to support my head covering addiction, please do feel free to check out the wish lists down below and buy me more. I won't stop you. I'll be ever so grateful. And I'll have to invest in some more bandana storage somehow. Okay, there's one last sort of bonus question. How many bandanas have I worn during this video? Comment down below. How many head coverings have I worn during this video? If you click subscribe and click the little bell next to it, you'll be notified next time a new video comes up and you'll be able to see whether you're right or not. And with that, bye.